I'ma need a something, 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 something to pump me up. Feeling saucy, something, something, Balenciaga. I don't, I don't know the words. Hold on, I feel like we need a beverage. I feel like I need a beverage. Not an alcoholic beverage, but I feel like, I think, mm, hot chocolate or Oreos and milk. Mm. Oh my God, I don't know. I'm so indecisive. If you don't know that, then you're probably new here. So welcome, nice to see you. If you are new here, then you know I'm indecisive, but I don't know, ever know what I want. We're gonna do Oreos and milk, I think. I hot chocolate do sound good though. Okay, no, we're gonna do Oreos, 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 Oreos. You can't even really see me. See you, see me, okay. my milk whenever I eat Oreos and milk because oh my dad's calling. Are you awake? <laughs> Ain't it like nine o'clock? No, it is only nine fifteen. You're this brown couch in my Oh that's why you that's why you awake. I'm here watching Lord of the Rings. They're down there doing uh, uh, happy stuff down there. What kind of happy stuff? Well, going on there was painting ornaments or something. Oh. She, she was doing it with Melinda. Oh. So, my dad called me, he threw me off, and I already ate my Oreos, so. We don't even have to eat it while we talk now. But I wanted to make this video because I know a lot of my subscribers are probably like, Oh my God, what does this girl have going on? She's literally all over the place. Like I started off as a medical assistant in the beginning of my channel and now I've kind of like pivoted over into something completely different. So I thought it would be a really good idea to share my journey. Just a little quick rundown on how I got here and you know, everything that happened in between when I became a medical assistant and how I'm here now. So starting off, I became a medical assistant in 2021. I did that program online, U.S. Career Institute. You all know, most of y'all have seen that video. Most of y'all have seen a lot of my videos on becoming a medical assistant. And my main thing for wanting to do that program was because back then I wanted to be a PA. I wanted to be a physician assistant. Um, so medical assisting was never gonna be like a long-term thing for me. I literally only did it because I wanted to have the ability to get patient care hours, which is something that you need to apply for PA school. So getting the certification and using the certification was always going to be like a temporary thing until I could get into PA school, just get experience until I can get in. So yeah, that happened. And then in 2021, I also graduated from college. So I graduated from college with my bachelor's in public health in May. And then after May, I ended up moving to Georgia. I feel like <laughs> this story is probably gonna be like literally all over the place. I ended up moving to Georgia because Rico, if you guys didn't know, Rico was in the military. So he was going to Georgia for his training that he had to do. Long story short, I ended up going to Georgia with him um, instead of us being apart. So while I was in Georgia, I knew that Georgia was gonna be a temporary thing. I knew his training was not gonna last forever. So I wanted to find a remote work from home job that I could work from anywhere. So that even after we left Georgia, I still was gonna be able to work and make money without having to worry about, oh, we're leaving Georgia, so now I have to leave my job, so now I don't have no money. You know, I still could work. So that is how I got into Pharmacovigilance, which is the job that I've had, that I most recently have gotten laid off from. So that job, the Pharmacovigilance job, I worked that from the time we went to Georgia, which is probably like July, I wanna say from July, that was a lie. I worked that job from, I got hired in July, but my start date wasn't until August. So I worked that job from August until September of the next following year, which is this year. So from August, 2021 until September 
of 2022. So I worked that job for a relatively long time. Cause it was a, it was a cool job. I mean, I wasn't like, oh my God, I love this job. You know, I wasn't like crazy about it or anything, but it was okay. And it made me a nice decent amount of money. So I was okay with it. After we left Georgia, we moved to Texas. So you all know how the military works, moving all over the place. Um, me and Rico are engaged. So I definitely had the intention of going with him wherever he goes unless it's a deployment because obviously I can't go on that but anywhere he goes I plan on going so when we got to Texas I kind of still dibble dabbled with the idea of being a clinician so I was bouncing back and forth at this point with PA or nurse practitioner so I wanted to be a PA because PAs have more lateral mobility. You know, they're able to move specialties and that was something that was really attractive to me. But nurse practitioner kind of caught my attention because although they don't have the same lateral mobility as PAs, they do have a little bit more autonomy. And I also resonated more with the fact that they have like more of a holistic view of the patient. So they don't just treat and diagnose, but they also worry about everything else in between. So I think I resonated a little bit more with that approach with the nursing model than I did um, the medical model, which is what PAs go off of. I was doing my thing, you know, researching schools, really trying to figure out what I really want. I noticed that I was severely lacking the motivation to apply to these programs. I have certain things and certain hobbies that literally could keep my attention from sun up until sundown and I wouldn't get tired of them. Whereas I feel like there was kind of like a drop off in my motivation after I left college to really go for the clinician role. And for a minute I was like, no, you know, you're just being lazy, like do what you have to do, whatever. But when I dug deeper into kind of like why I might be feeling this way, I realized that the things that I love doing were not aligned with being a clinician. For example, if you want to hear like more about this and you want to hear more deeply into the reason why I decided not to become a PA, you can definitely go over to my video. I'll link it above. Um, it's titled, I don't want to be a physician assistant anymore and this is why. You can go check that out. But right now I'm just going to kind of summarize it. I realized I've always wanted to help patients. I've always wanted to be an advocate for patients, especially because there's just such a huge need for black people in the healthcare space, for minority populations in the healthcare space. So I really wanted to help patients, but I think I started to realize as I became more and more detached from college that my desire to help patients wasn't necessarily rooted in wanting to do the clinical work. Started thinking about how in college, I didn't enjoy any of the science classes. I didn't enjoy any of the pre-PA classes. I enjoyed medical terminology, but essentially most of the classes I did not enjoy. Um, the only classes that I really thoroughly enjoyed in college were the public health classes. Were the classes that were discussing health disparities and social determinants of health and how these outside environmental factors influence our health probably way more than anything else. Like, you know, I started to see that there was way more than just diagnosing and treating a patient. Like public health, my public health degree taught me so much about how we even got to where we are, like health-wise as a country. Like it's just so, so crazy. And I think it really opened my eyes and made me realize my desire is not necessarily to diagnose and treat. My desire is more so rooted in wanting to uh, fight for health equity, wanting to reduce health disparities, wanting to promote population health. My desires were more so focused on prevention, not necessarily in the diagnosing and the treating aspect of it. So, and it took me leaving college to realize that because when you're in college, it can really seem like something is for you, something is what you wanna do, and th this is really crazy. It can really seem like something is for you, something is what you wanna do, but honestly, I feel like we have a lot of outside pressures that kinda influence our decision on what we think we should be going for, when in our reality, it might not be what we should be going for. And that was the case in my situation. It might not be the case in everybody's situation, but that was the case for me. I feel like in college, I spent the whole four years kind of convincing myself that, okay, this has to be my thing. This has to be my thing. Um, and I didn't really sit down and, and think about who I really was as a person, what I really like and what goals I really had. If that makes sense. I don't know y'all, did that make sense? If you ever felt that, then comment it down below. But I really don't think that I truly 
was thinking that deeply into the decision to become a PA or to become a nurse practitioner when I was in college. I think it just, I think it just sounded good and it, it fit well. Like you all know, a lot of people, especially if you've been to college, you all know a lot of people in college are going for the same thing. They want to be a doctor. They want to be a PA. They want to be a nurse. They want to be a um, what was the other one I said? They want to be a nurse pr practitioner. And I think sometimes we convince ourselves that, you know, our lack of motivation is just laziness when our lack of motivation is really our minds trying to tell us that this is not where our heart is. This is not where our passion is. And when I started to realize that I could advocate for patients and fight for health equity in other ways besides being in the clinical space, I never turned back and I never regretted my decision to not pursue that side of things. Which is why in about December of 2021, I, why in December of 2021, I started researching different programs that I could do. And you know, it was always, for me, it was always gonna be between a master's in public health or a master's in healthcare administration. And the reason why I didn't ultimately go with, I have a video on this too, if you wanna watch it. But the reason why I ultimately didn't go with the masters in public health is just because I feel like I've already gained a lot of knowledge in that area. And I wanted to kind of like switch it up and become a more versatile applicant, add more variability to my resume, essentially, um, and help myself be more marketable in certain spaces. So whereas a bachelor's in public health might not make me marketable in the fight for a hospital administrator spot or a hospital manager spot, the master's in healthcare administration will kind of push me the rest of the way to be in those spaces. So in December 2021 is when I decided to get a master's in healthcare administration. Um, I ended up applying, I ended up getting in. Because I'm a part of an online asynchronous program, um, it was relatively quick. The process was really relatively quick. I already had all the prerequisites, especially with my being pre-PA in college and with my uh, BPH curriculum, I really had, it was not difficult for me to meet those requirements. So I was able to apply right away. And um, I think about a month later, I ended up getting accepted. So that's kind of how I got here today. Will I go back into a medical assistant role again? I don't know. I can't really say. I do know my renewal is coming up in 2023, so I have to renew that certification. But right now, I can't really say whether or not I'll go back into a medical assistant role. I'm really wanting to get into a more admin role because what I want to do is gain experience and gain knowledge in the healthcare administration space. Like right now, I've only ever worked as a medical assistant, so I can only speak to that experience. You know what I'm saying? I can't speak to the healthcare administration experience because I don't, technically, I don't really have a whole lot. I do know that medical assistants are very in need right now, so I mean, there's a possibility I could go back into a medical assistant role, but I think in the back of my mind, going into a role of that nature, I would probably be more so working on building rapport with the organization that I'm a part of so that I could then pivot into a different role later on. I don't think it will be anything that I would be planning on staying in or planning on like building a career in, if, if that makes sense. So that's where I'm at now. I gave you guys a list of healthcare administration jobs, entry level jobs, that those are literally the exact jobs that I'm applying for now. We shall see, I look forward to the day when I'll be able to tell you guys that I got hired for one of these jobs. If there's, and if there's anything specific that you guys wanna know about my journey or anything specific that you guys wanna get into, of course you can always leave a comment down below um, and I can respond to you there or you can find me on Instagram at Anaya Shay and DM me there if you feel like it's a more personal question and I can get back with you. Just regarding those DMs, you guys just remember that a lot of those go into my requests first. So if I don't, typically I don't look at those like every day. So just give me a little bit of time to, you know, see. I mean, if, if you want me to respond really fast, I don't know, maybe like some pictures or something. So send me a bat signal and let me know that you message me and I can, we can do it that way and I can go ahead and look at it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully that clears up some holes and some gaps 
in my journey because I know I've kind of hopped around a lot and you guys are probably like, whoa, what is she doing? Um, and hopefully you guys will still stick around with me for the ride. And, and I'm excited. I'm excited about where I'm going. You know, I'm excited about where you guys are going because I know I have a lot of medical assistants, aspiring medical assistants, healthcare administration students, whether it be the bachelor's or the master's. Um, I have a lot of you guys in the healthcare space on this channel and I'm excited to see what we can do to change the state of the healthcare industry. I know you guys are passionate about it because I can see all of y'all in my comments and I'm definitely passionate about it. So whatever space you're trying to be in, whether it be the clinical space or the administrative space, either way, I think we all have one major goal is to improve the healthcare system and I honestly can't wait to see what kind of mark we all make in that realm later on like a couple years down the road so if you like this video go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you got something to say leave me a comment down below and look around on my channel if you are new welcome if you end up liking what you see go ahead and subscribe xoxo a nine shake